Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Circuit Court in and for Manatee County and the 12th Judicial Circuit of the State of Florida is now open and convened. With attending judges on bonk for the for investiture of the Honorable Heather Doyle as Circuit uh, Correction County Judge of the 12th Judicial Circuit, all are invited to draw near and pay attention as court is now in session. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief Judge of the 12th Judicial Circuit, the Honorable Kimberly Carlton Bonner. Thank you all so much for being here. This is a tremendous occasion for all of us. Um, it's a bittersweet for us, and but we're saying goodbye to our friend and colleague, Doug Henderson, in full-time service, but we are also here to welcome Heather Doyle as the newest member of, um, of our family. And we thank you for sharing this with us. Um, this is a very special day, and I, I want to make sure that Judge Doyle knows that you need to remember this particular moment, take a moment, take a deep breath, and look around, because this is the one day when you are Judge Doyle, and everyone loves you. <laughs> everyone. You have done no wrong. Enjoy it. This is a noble profession and we are also very blessed to have the chance to do it. And the day that you don't come to work and think to yourself, I'm so lucky that I get to do this, is probably the day you should start thinking about moving on because it is a wonderful opportunity to serve the public and you are going to do a wonderful job and we know this. Um, and I know this because um, and speaking with Judge Doyle the other day, she was um, so overwhelmed with the support that she has received from us and the mentorship and the guidance and the education and all that is provided to, to all of us. Um, all we have to do is step out and make a phone call and we'll have five colleagues ready to step in and help us. All we have to do is make a phone call to court administration and whatever problem we have, they are helping with. And the reason that I know that she is going to be um, among one of our giants here in this circuit is because the first thing she said was, it's been so wonderful having this for me. I can't wait to do it for someone else. I can't wait for the next new judge to come in so I can, I can be that person that they go to. Uh, we've had a lot of giants in this circuit. We've had wonderful men and women on this bench. Um, we are so lucky. We have, I think, the best bar in the state of Florida. We have the best attorneys and we have the best judiciary. We are all very, very fortunate to be here, and we all consider ourselves very fortunate that we have Judge Doyle among us now. So I would like to welcome you to the fold um, officially. And um, again, we thank you all for being here, and we do have uh, an invocation to begin with, so I'm going to ask Alfred James to please step forward for the invocation.
Good afternoon. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings today upon your servant, the Honorable Heather Doyle. Lord, we pray that you will bless Judge Doyle with wisdom, patience, respect, and adherence to the law for all who appear before her. Grant her the disposition that values all persons, regardless of economic and social class, ethnicity, or color. We give thanks also to the governor of the state of Florida for the appointment of uh, Ms. Doyle as judge. Oh Lord, I pray this day that you will pull out from heaven a boldness, a courage, wisdom, and discernment upon her in order that she would judge rightly. We also pray that beginning this day will be a lifetime for her of judicial excellence and service. It is in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Today I would just like to say a few words about the Honorable Heather Doyle. It begins with my service in drug court and being there as long as I've been, I've seen a lot of people come and people go. Prouder Judge Doyle becoming a part of the drug court team, she would cover from time to time. However, covering a week here and a week there is not the same as being a part of the drug court team. It was her installment as a member of that drug court team that I began to really know Heather Doyle. One of the first things that I noticed about Judge Doyle was that she was educable. We all know what that means. She was willing to learn. This told me a lot about her. It told me that she understood that she did not have all of the answers and that she was willing to learn from those who went before her. That's a trait I believe that's important for anybody who will cast judgment, ability to learn and willing to learn. A trait also of someone who is willing to learn is that they generally possess a certain amount of humility. You can never learn if there is no humility. And I found in Judge Doll there was a humility and she was willing to ask questions about things that she didn't know or quite understand. And all, not only that, it's one thing to ask questions, it's another thing to implement those things when you've gotten the answers that you've requested. And she was willing to implement some of those things when she learned what she needed to know. I spoke of drug court as a team, and Judge Doyle is also a team player. Many of the things that she learned was, was gathered when we would get together as a team, and, and that was one of the things I really liked. We'd get together in the different disciplines, the drug court, staff, public defender, state attorney, Department of Corrections, we'd all get together, and, and this was away from our normal drug court settings, and we would discuss things about the program. We would discuss some of the things we want to implement, and we sit there sometime an hour or two, and, uh, and we talk about those things. Judge Doyle is a team player. She's willing to hear from the other side, and she's willing to listen and willing to play her role. I'd also like to say that she's a person of compassion. I say this because I remember one, after one weekend, she had read this article in the paper and it touched her heart. And it caused her to look at her role and what she did. And she called me and we sat down and we talked and we discussed the veracity of the claims that she had read. She also asked me what could we do to change this perception that was out there. Judge Doyle began to actively work on making changes so that what she read would not become common practice with her. Out of our many meetings, our conversations came the various tracks of treatment court that we now have. Some of those times we sit together, we talk about things, 
And this also goes back to the compassion. And out of that came tracks such the uh, high intensity track, the hit track, a track where people who normally would not be allowed in the drug court would now be allowed to get an opportunity to come in and get treatment instead of going to prison. Also out of that came our health care court. Uh, we began to look at some of the arrests and some of the things that were going on and we realized there are a lot of people who had mental health issues who were slipping through the cracks and they never got an opportunity to get treatment uh, for those ills that they had. Judge Doyle was a great part of that. And upon reading, conversing, meeting, and who knows what else, Judge Doyle began to work on getting people in our treatment courts who previously did not have that opportunity. Judge Doyle is also accessible. I was always to get in contact with her if I needed. If, if she had a question, if I had a question, we needed to provide a comment, we needed to provide input, and even available on the weekends. There were some weekends, texts would be sent across asking about this, asking about that, but we were always able to keep in contact and to talk about what was going on and to work things out that were happening in the program. This also helped me to understand the drive that she had to get things uh, better so that things could become what they should be. This being said, Judge Doyle is also adaptable. In the world in which we live, <laughs> there are going to be times we're going to have to adapt. There will be new laws. New laws will come. There will be more light shed on the many things that perplex us and cause us to question. There will be greater knowledge that will be amassed. All of these things will require us to make some change. Judge Doyle is already on that path. She's already begun to make the adjustments. She's already begun to take in the knowledge that she may not have known to see what light has been shed upon the circumstances that may not have been shared previously. In closing, I'd just like to say what I've read for you today is what I would like for you to know about the Heather Doyle that I grew to know while working with her in the treatment course. As I said before, I'd seen her around. She dropped in, but it was why she became a part that I became, that I really began to know who she was. And in closing, Judge Doyle, I would just like to say this to you. Just remember to allow the light of the sun to shine upon you as you enter into your new day's dawn. Thank you very much. Thank you. And if I could please ask uh, Judge Lon Aaron to please step forward. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. It's great to see so many people here to support my friend. I did say that. Um, and I thought I had it under control. We'll see, we'll see how we do. Um, this is really an exciting day in, in Manatee County for everyone here. And I'm not here to talk as a judge. I'm here to talk as a friend of, of Heather and share with you what I know about her, what's special about her, and uh, what I think is really special about her making it to, to the bench. <clears throat> That's just something stuck in my throat. That has nothing to do with other stuff. Um, and it's, as I said, it's exciting to see so many people here to support her today. Um, 19 years she's been a lawyer and had the opportunity to become a judge and to see so many people from all different parts of the community to support her to be here is great for, for me to see whether it's over here or over here or out there. Oh, up there too, look at you. Um, and it's interesting because today's kind of a historic day. I, my math tells me that with Judge Henderson's retirement and Judge Doyle's appointment that for the first time, I should have checked with Judge Smith, I believe the female judges outnumber the male judges in our circuit. Um, <laughs> Am I right on that? I believe I'm right. Where is he? I'm right on that, aren't I? Yeah. 
it's, it's cur currently 16 to 15, so you're a trailblazer in, in that way. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy to, to, to see that. Um, anyway, many of you here already know Heather. You know how fantastic of a judge she'll be because of what it is about her. Um, for those of you that don't know her very well, that's what I want to do, to do was share a little bit of personal about her. She's been uh, family friends with my family for 19 years. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, all the way back to when my kids were little, she babysat my kids, changed diapers, and, and did those things when, when we were together. Um, one point so far as to the middle of the night, I woke up horribly sick and horribly contagious with two, an infant and a toddler. And there's no way that my wife was going to take me to the hospital and infect the kids and her when we're dealing with little kids. And I called you in the middle of the night, came over, picked me up, took me to the emergency room, at risk to herself and, and all that. Um, but that's just the kind of person she is that would drop anything she could do to get up and help everybody else. Um, since I've known her, she's married Jeff, and, and he's here, and you have a great person to, to, to be with. And, um, and they have Caroline, they're great people. Um, and I know you all are very proud of, of what she's accomplished. Um, professionally, as a trial lawyer, she was a fabulous trial lawyer. We tried a number of cases together. I always look forward to trying cases with her because she's brilliant and good and dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's and did what, what needed to happen and made me very happy. Um, well, in 2016, I left the state attorney's office and at that point, I could think of nobody better to be chief assistant than Ms. Doyle. I told you that at the time, as, as you remember. <laughs> Um, probably about a hundred times, if, if, my, if my memory's right. Um, and I think I was right. Was I right? right. I was right. Um, and, she, and she proved that I was right by being fantastic at, at that job. Um, and I believe also you were the first female to be chief assistant in the 12th Judicial Circuit. So another trailblazer along, along the way. So why was she the best choice to be the chief assistant back then? It's the same reasons why I think she's a great choice to be a judge now, and I just want to share a few of those traits as to why I, I believe that to be the case. Heather is one of the most honest and ethical people that I've ever met in my entire life, almost to a fault, um, because it's to make sure that everything is done right and done in the right way. You can tell that her peers have recognized that because the judges awarded her this year with the Jim Slater Award for Professionalism, which is consistent with that, and she did a wonderful job to, to earn that. Second, and something that Alfred said a few minutes ago, she really does listen and learn. Um, and when I mean listen, when you talk to her, she actually is listening to you and paying attention to, to what you have to say, and you can feel it. And I believe the people who appear in front of you are going to feel that along the way, even if you rule against them. They will still believe that you listened along the way and did what you thought was the right thing to do. One thing that she loves is constructive criticism and would force me to give you constructive criticism throughout the way. So I invite all of you, as often as you like, <laughs> to give her as much constructive criticism as you think would, would be appropriate. She likes to be told that she's doing something wrong, that she's doing it in the wrong way. Uh, but I say in all seriousness, she actually will listen to that and will do everything she can to do better because that's part of her nature and part of her makeup. Um, also, as Alfred had mentioned a while ago, she's a very caring and compassionate person. Um, I think that goes without saying for those of you that know her. Um, but I would say that I think being caring and compassionate is very important for a judge. Judges shouldn't be robots. They should be people that care about what's happening and you totally exemplify that along the way. Um, she cares about our community. She's involved in the community through Kiwanis, and you may mention something about that in, in a minute. Um, but the community can take on a bigger role than that. And I'll give you just a small example. Um, she was involved in the treatment courts, as Alfred had talked about a, a few moments ago. And we have a drug, a drug court, a veterans court, a Tyler court, and some things that we can do for alternative treatments. And one of the issues that you found important and really looked at was mental health. And there's no question that mental health issues are an important issue in our criminal justice system. And you actually were instrumental in getting a mental health track started in our uh, alternative courts as a track of our drug court system. And I was so excited for that because it's something that we talked about and I knew that was important to you. So, so thank you for that. Um, and what I think is special about her was she takes the bench is she still maintains the importance of that. 
still wants to follow through with all of that. And um, we certainly talked about a standalone mental health court, a comprehensive treatment court, or a homeless court, all things that really could benefit your community and that you'd be an instrumental part of that. And I know we're all looking forward to working together with you in order to make, accomplish those goals and make our community better. Um, in closing, hopefully I didn't go too long, um, I do want to congratulate Heather, she's my de facto little sister through all this, um, on this honor. I really couldn't be any more proud. And I wish you a long and successful career. Thank you. And if we could please have the Honorable Ed Nicholas um, come forward. Well, that's a tough act to follow. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm just going to pause for a second because I love this room. I always have. This is where I was sworn in as a member of the bar in 1987 by Judge Walter Talley, right here, I think, with Bunny Rose sitting right there. Remember Bunny Rose? Um, it's a very special place for me. It's a very special place for Heather. She tried her first case in this very room. A lot of us tried our first cases in this very room. And um, I think of all the history here, and then all the investitures, Judge Moreland's, Judge Dunnigan's, Judge Ferentz's, Judge Singer's. I mean, how many people had their, a lot of investitures, a lot of happy moments in this room. A lot of history in this room. And then I think about the lawyers that have passed through those doors, that tried cases here, that argued cases in front of the court. J lawyers like Mark Lipinski and Jim Slater and Scott Reith and Ralph Matice. Again, a lot of history in this room. And today we add another chapter to the storied history of this wonderful place. We add another patch in the patchwork quilt that is courtroom. Is it C or E? It was C and then it became E. In any event, we add another patch in the beautiful patchwork quilt that is this amazing room. And we are so happy for that. Caroline, I'll put you on the spot. Do me a favor, take a little mental picture. This is a really special moment in your mom's life and in your family's life. I want you to remember it for a long, long time. I think you will. Because your mom and your family are now a very special part of this special room. Your mom and your family are now part of that long history from years and years ago, from the 1920s, of this really, really unique place. As I said, your family is now a special part of this very special place, and congratulations for that. Heather, I got to know you well when you followed me as president of the Braden and Kiwanis Club. Shout out to our, member, our friends at the Braden and Kiwanis Club. <laughs> There are a lot of them here. Um, and I won't repeat all the things that Judge Aaron said about her amazing character, uh, but she did an amazing job. You know, my old assistant, Sheila Frazier, used to use the expression, good people. Not plural, she would say, he's good people, or she's good people. I think it's a Southern thing. <laughs> In any event, Heather Doyle is good people. She always has been good people. She's following another good people in Judge Henderson. Where is he? Right. He would probably understand that expression, good people. But she's good people, and she's going to be an amazing judge. In just a few moments, we're going to have the passing of the gavel, the symbolic changing of the guard, and that's a really cool moment. Speaking of passing of the gavel, speaking of the changing of the guard, we've had a number of them over the last couple of years. We've had some pretty significant retirements. Um, about a year or so ago, I suddenly realized that I'm the old guy on the ninth floor. Me and Dino and Bob and, to some extent, Diana. It happened very suddenly. I was the new guy forever, and suddenly I'm the old guy. They call me coach. They're coming for advice. That's kind of cool. But in any event, we've, we've, had, we've lost some really amazing institutional history, some re a wealth of experience in the retirement of some of my friends and colleagues but we've replaced them with some young and really, really good and smart judges. My buddy Janet Dunnigan retired, but we got Judge Sniffin. Uh, Judge Hayworth retired, easily one of the best, but we got Judge Dees. Judge Brownell retired, and we got Judge Arend. Judge Owens retired, and we got Judge McHugh. Judge Goldman retired, and we got Judge Moss. So we've had some changes 
and those people that know me know that I'm pretty change averse. I want everything to stay the same all the time. But we've had some wonderful judges retire over the years. <clears throat> but as I've said, we've gotten some really, really good ones in their stead. I have excellent colleagues. And today we add another excellent colleague. We add another really, really good one. So let's get to it. Congratulations, my friend. You are good people, and you are exactly where you're supposed to be. Okay, we are going to ask Carolyn Doyle and Olivia Michaels to please step forward and they're going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So if everyone would please stand and we'll ask these young ladies to lead us off. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Okay, after those speeches, I feel much like the Grinch that my heart grew three sizes just now. Um, we are going to have some presentations, which is um, the best part for our, for our newest judge. This is when you get the presents. Um, so we are going to start asking the Honorable Danielle Brewer, um, who is our uh, resident DeSoto County judge in the 12th Circuit, to please step forward. And you have a presentation for Judge Doyle. you'll come on up. So this is one of the last times that you'll actually be able to accept gifts from anybody in this room. <laughs> Think of this as Christmas because this will be the best that it'll get ever. <laughs> um, on behalf of myself, all of the county judges uh, in the 12th Judicial Circuit and all of the county judges statewide, um, I want to present to you your nameplate from the Conference of County Court Judges of Florida. This will become the place that uh, you'll have a lot of your family there. Um, and all of us uh, statewide are always there for you. And uh, I thank you for um, all of the efforts that you've put into DeSoto County's treatment court. Um, Heather has been on constant speed dial along with Terry Drake there as well for me um, over the past couple years getting that started. So I thank you so much for that and I am happy to have you on board and I'm lucky to call you a colleague. Congratulations. Don't get too comfortable, there's more. Um, next, I'm going to ask um, our state attorney, the Honorable Ed Brodsky, to please step forward, and you have a presentation as well. Well, today marks a, a lifelong dream for Heather Doyle uh, of becoming a judge. Um, and, and I, like uh, Judge Aaron and many here, have, have had the privilege of working with Heather Doyle. And I, I could say that you did a remarkable job at the state attorney's office. Um, you know, you are someone I trusted very much, a close ally. So I wish you the very best. And uh, I know you're going to be extremely successful. And next, our president of the Manatee County Bar Association, Charles Telfair, has a um, presentation. You are not Charles Telfair. I am not Charles Telfair. You are not. <laughs> Charlie has the flu. Okay. I'm, I'm glad he's not here. <laughs> I'm Alex St. Paul. I'm the past president of the Bar Association, and Charlie is really bummed out that he can't be here today because he was really looking forward to this. But it's my lucky day, and I'm so happy to give you this. Now, for those of you who have never seen this, this is a lovely gavel in a cherry case and it has her name and the date of today on it. It's a prized coveted gift and it's just for you. <laughs> and next we have our president-elect of the Sarasota County Bar Association, Jennifer Grosso. And this is Jennifer. Yes. Okay. <laughs> 
Thank you. Unlike most of the, the people in this room, we haven't crossed paths before. But having listened to the speeches today, I'm so looking forward to working with you. And it is an honor and a privilege to be able to present this clock to you. And presenting our, from the Sarasota County Bar Association, the president-elect of our South County Division, Anthony Mowry. First of all, thank you for allowing us to come up here and uh, welcome you to the bench here in this beautiful courtroom. Um, if you ever do get down to South County, uh, we, <laughs> the members of the South County Division of the Sarasota County Bar, wanted to present you with a book on the city of Venice, uh, so you'll know a little bit about um, that city and any lawyers who come up here to practice in front of you. So congratulations. Thank you. Next, on behalf of the Manatee County Bar Association, the president of the Young Lawyers Division, Melissa Casanueva. Good afternoon. I am so happy I got the privilege to be here on behalf of the Young Lawyers of Manatee County. And almost um, Honorable Nicholas was taking some of my thunder of the history that has happened in our county. But so we um, are thrilled to present with you the Lawyers and Legends of Manatee County, which now I can say was authored by your colleague, Honorable Gilbert Smith Jr. Um, and just congratulations on joining the history of Manatee County as well as the Tulsa. And our next um, presentation is by uh, the president of the Manatee Chapter of the Florida Association for William, Women Lawyers, Grace Reeves. We're so excited to have a, another woman lawyer, and it seems like women lawyers are winning in the circuit, 16 to 15, which is awesome. Um, on behalf of Manatee Fall, we're presenting you with a pin. It is um, engraved with your name, so I don't think you'll ever forget you're a judge, but in case you do, you can look down and remember, I'm a judge. <laughs> And now from the uh, Florida Association of Women Lawyers, the president-elect of the Sarasota chapter, um, Stephanie Murphy. Judge Doyle, good afternoon. On behalf of the Sarasota Florida Association of Women Lawyers, I want to thank you. This um, investiture today is not just a celebration of your achievements and accomplishments, but those of all the women and those have, who have fought for women's equality in the law. So on behalf of Sarasota Fall, thank you. And next, if I could please have Herbert Hoffman please step forward as the president of the Manatee Sarasota chapter, the American Board of Trial Advocates. Your Thank you. Good afternoon. It is an honor to be able to present on behalf of ABOTA a gift to you. And as was mentioned, of course, this will be the only time gifts will be coming. Um, I didn't have the privilege of working with Judge Doyle, although our careers started similarly with me working in the state attorney's office for a few years, I did my best to try and find something that would be personalized for you. But I couldn't find a judicial turtle. <laughs> and my understanding is that there is a turtle just crossing the line, and at this point in time, it needs a robe to go along with your new position. Um, I respect Judge Aaron immensely. I just don't think I can follow the advice of telling another uh, member of the court that she's wrong because then I probably would hear, Mr. Hoffman, I think you need to stay in your lane. Is that something <laughs> close? <laughs> the next thing that I thought I'd try to get for you, you've already gotten now is a pen, and I thought we'd have a beautiful pen for all the orders that you're going to sign, except 
I heard this rumor that you don't need a pen because you have hundreds of pens. Something about every time you would visit an attorney's office, the pen would leave with you. So, your honor is a word to the wise. Uh, if you have favorite pens, you might want to just watch out for them. Um, even though I did just meet you today, that didn't mean I didn't do some research. So, what we did settle on, and it's not a settle by any means, but this can either be displayed at your bench, in chambers, it has Judge Heather Doyle, professionalism and civility. Anything less will not be tolerated, and I believe everything we've heard about this wonderful individual will be absolutely upheld by those words. Congratulations. I'm a pen thief too, so it's okay. It's, it's just a misdemeanor, it'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> if I could please have Matt Sandberg step forward. He is the president of the Sarasota chapter of the Florida Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. Well, I've been honored to know Heather, uh, or Judge Doyle since I started at, as an attorney in 2005. Uh, one quick th story that I think epitomizes Judge Doyle. Um, we were in drug court recently before the judge took the bench. Our case was worked out, uh, but what the judge wanted to enthusiastically tell me about was another success story. Another person in drug court whose case was being addressed that day, uh, someone who had a more serious crime but had been ex accepted into the program and was doing great so far. I could tell how excited Judge Doyle was about this, someone getting the opportunity and turning their life around. She truly cared for this defendant and wanted to see him succeed. And that caring for other people is something that Judge Doyle exemplified as a prosecutor and is something that I know that Judge Doyle will exemplify on the bench. So on behalf of uh, the Sarasota chapter of Florida Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, I present you with this gavel, uh, says the Honorable Heather Doyle, Congratulations from FACDL, Liberty's Left Champion. Before our last um, presentation, I, I wanted to pause for just a moment to introduce, um, she is not just our present wrangler, um, this is Kim Miller, who is um, our incoming trial court administrator. Um, that we are very pleased to welcome um, as our fearless leader. And Walt, thanks for leaving on my watch. Super appreciate that. Um, really appreciate it. Um, we are going to miss Walt, and we are um, so excited to work with Kim. So if we could just pause for a moment to recognize both of them and thank them for all they're doing. And for the end of the presence, for now, um, I'd please like to welcome Leland Taylor, who's here on behalf of the Manatee Chapter of FACTL, the Florida Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. Judge Doyle, on behalf of Jennifer Fury and uh, the Manatee County Chapter of the FACTL, we just want to say first, um, it's been great working with you over the years, always having an open door at the state attorney's office, having an open mind, your hard work in drug court, um, your work on uh, mental health court, and the alternative courts does not go unnoticed. Um, when we were trying to figure out what to get for you, um, usually we present a plaque, but this time we were thinking about a book, and so I was talking with Jennifer, and she's like, oh yeah, well, let's get her a book from Ruth Bader Ginsburg, right? Like, well, you know, maybe not that. What about Sandra Day O'Connor? But then I came across this book, and talk to some folks about it and judges have some hard decisions sometimes but often and this book just seemed so appropriate at least from our bar and it's called trust first a true story about the power of giving people second chances 
And we know you've worked real hard to do that in the past. We look forward to you being on the, on the bench. And so behalf, on behalf of the Manatee County chapter of the Association of Criminal Offense Lawyers, our public defenders, our conflict counsel, and anyone that's ever taken an indigent case or pro bono, congratulations. Soon. Are you ready? Okay. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. That was the correct answer. <laughs> All right, to administer our oath of office, I would like to please ask the Honorable Robert Ferentz, Manatee County Judge, to step forward. Excellent. And we now know, Heather, there's been... <laughs> Are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> I, if you'd raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, Heather Doyle. I, Heather Doyle. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, protect, and defend. That I will solemnly support. <laughs> that I will support, protect, and defend. The Constitution and government. The Constitution and government. Of the United States. Of the United States. And of the state of Florida. And of the state of Florida. That I am duly qualified. That I am duly qualified. To hold office. To hold office. Under the Constitution. Under the Constitution. Of the state. Of the state. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Perform the duties. Perform the duties. Of county judge. Of county judge. On which I am now about to enter. On which I am now about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. <laughs> But wait, there's more. I'm going to ask our most honorable Doug Henderson to please step forward. And he is going to officially be passing the gavel to Judge Doyle. And that will be followed by your official robing. So if Judge Henderson would please step forward. Fellow judges, and I include Judge Doyle. Friends, since you've last seen me last Friday, <laughs> spent two and a half days at Disney World, played, played golf with Judge Ferentz and Judge Adams because they were worried about me not having anything to do. Picked up the grandson to shuttle him from Parrish out to ball practices. And then the big project was cleaning out the shed at the house. <laughs> I've lost four pounds. <laughs> so can I please come back to work? <laughs> Shadowing uh, with several of the judges, including myself, Judge Doyle, in the last few weeks, uh, would come into court and take notes, and then we'd talk about it afterwards. I said, the biggest advice I can give you, don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, Heather it, as I've called her for years. Judge Doyle, I am so proud and honored to pass this gavel to you, and it doesn't get any better than this. Congratulations. This is the last time you'll hear from me. Um, I want um, Jeffrey and Carolyn to please come up. 
Um, they are going to be um, putting on your judicial robe and then uh, you will get to address everyone, but just take a moment again, take a deep breath, look. Everyone loves you. Okay, take it away. Well, you all made it. That's good. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. It's uh, and up there. Thank you all so much for being up there. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, unbelievable. It's remarkable. It's surreal. It's overwhelming. Um, I'm trying to remember to breathe, um, but I was just you know. There's a very important question that's been looming uh, on my mind for the past couple hours. I'm sure none of you know the answer to this question, but I figured I would ask, are the Rays winning? <laughs> what is the score? Four nothing? All right, we're gonna go ahead and move along then. Uh, Chief Judge Bonner, judges, members of the bar, courthouse, administrative staff, clerk staff, uh, Manatee County Sheriff's Office deputies, dignitaries, family, and friends. When I looked at, uh, you know, I was kind of preparing my remarks the past few days. I was told four inches. Okay. Um, the past few days, uh, I was really wasn't sure kind of what direction to go in and what to talk about, and so I thought I would dazzle you with my legal knowledge. Maybe I could recite the Magna Carta. Um, <laughs> So I went, I went to see my daughter, Caroline, who you've met just recently, and she was shockingly on her cell phone watching YouTube with her AirPods in. And, um, and so I said, my, my nickname for her is Goose. I said, Goose, uh, I need to talk to you. What? I need to talk to you. <sighs> yes. I said, I'm going to be doing these remarks. Do you have any suggestions for me? And she looked at me, I told you I was gonna tell this story. So she looked at me and she, she went like, she said, I can't do it as, as well as you, it's not as authentic, but she went, oh. <laughs> Mom, thank them and sit down. <laughs> So that's basically what I'm going to do, because uh, she gives great advice. So, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because today, it, although it kind of seems like it's about me, it's really not. Uh, this is a day about you. This is a day about our community. Uh, this is a day about gratitude. Um, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you from, um, from the bottom of my heart. I'd like to thank the Judicial Nominating Commission for nominating me and to Governor DeSantis for this appointment. Uh, many of the members of the JNC are here. I thank you so much for being here. It really means a lot. Uh, this is unbelievably humbling and I want you all to know I will never forget the privilege that is bestowed upon me. Some say that leaders grow a community. But it's also a community that grows its leaders. And that is what I have been the very fortunate recipient of. A community mentors them, it molds them, 
You may not even know it's happening, but that symbiotic relationship is ever present and always happening. And whether we know it or not, the very people we're surrounded by right now in this room are our community. Everything we say to one another affects each other, and then we go off and we spread it off into the rest of our community. I've been the lucky recipient of a community of those in law, government, finance, real estate, business, education, the arts, nonprofit, and other uh, disciplines that have molded, grown, mentored, and most importantly, picked me up the countless number of times that I fell down. It happened as recently as a few minutes ago, I received some sage advice from a colleague, thank you Judge Denkin, and a warm, encouraging smile from best friends. For the past 19 years in my personal and professional life, you are all the reason why I am here. And um, Judge Ferentz swore me in. Uh, Judge Ferentz, you are one of my role models. Uh, back in 2000, he swore me in as a lawyer in the courtroom right down the hall here. Uh, I knew nothing. I, I can let you know I still don't know very much, uh, but I'm willing to learn. And uh, this is the very first courtroom uh, where I practiced law. It looked a lot different than this. So we are very thankful to our clerk and the clerk before her for this amazing restoration. Um, the next judge that I practiced law in front of after Judge um, Ferentz was Judge Henderson. And I, I just want to tell you a very super short brief story because this does not have to do with thanking, which is in violation of your instruction. Um, I really got to see, when you essentially stalk someone for two weeks and shadow them, um, you know, you really get to know someone on a different level. And Judge Henderson, you know, here he's leaving this job that he has done for 20 years. And he was unbelievably selfless and did nothing but spend his time to mold and grow and help me. And I just want to say thank you. That is just, it was amazing. And um, he did tell me a lot of times not to do it the way he does. <laughs> I'm not commenting. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the, the, all of the judicial assistants, my judicial assistant, uh, Debbie Truss, she's phenomenal. Thank you, Debbie, you're amazing. You, you have to stay with me forever. Um, all of the judicial assistants, they did this special breakfast for me. I walked in, it was amazing. Um, Judith and, um, and um, Kim Miller and, and everyone has been just phenomenal. So I will kind of let you in on one story also not thanking someone, is uh, one of the judges that I shadowed, I uh, was talking to her and, and she said uh, her normal routine is that she gets up, gets to the office by 7 a.m. and uh, works through lunch, uh, stays till about six, gets home, uh, has dinner with her family, and then she turns around and uh, fires up her uh, computer and continues to work and finish her work. Um, and I think that says a lot about the work ethic of the judiciary that we have here. Um, it mirrors those of our practitioners. And, um, and I have some very, very excellent role models uh, to be able to look to. I also subscribe to a meal delivery service. <laughs> Okay, now the hard part. Uh, my grandmothers are not here today. Uh, they're up north, but, uh, and you're not gonna get to meet them. Can I tell you just a little bit about them? Um, and it probably reminds you of everything and people in your family and connects with you on a different level too. My grandmothers are amazing. They're in their 90s. Um, I was lucky I hit the family lottery, and I have a strong, supportive family who molded and helped me all the way. And, um, 
and they are so ever present in all of my memories of my childhood and they are full of integrity and character and, and I just can't thank them enough. I know they're going to watch this. So, um, Grandma and Mimi, I love you so much and you are part of the reason why I am here today. <sighs> my parents are here. There's really not enough uh, time to explain the magnificent people that you are. Um, both as individuals and as parents. I um, have so many memories from childhood that are happy and warm and have provided me the self-esteem and the grit to be able to uh, achieve what you all always believed in me was possible. My dad is the epitome of work ethic and integrity and my mother is all of those things and keeps us all together. And mom, you are the glue. And then I would say more things, but I'm going to cry. <laughs> my brother flew in for this. He's amazing. Um, he does life right. He's just happy to be here. He makes the most of every moment. He doesn't get bogged down in any negativity. He's always finding the right things to do at the right times for the right reasons. I love you so much, little brother. I'm so glad you're here. I only have two left. <laughs> My husband, Jeff, is here. I want you to know that the English language is too limited for the words that express how I feel about you. Love is a word that is overstated. It does not fill up the way I feel about who we are. You have sacrificed so much for your family and for my career. And what we have is so special and I do not take it for granted. You also asked me to pick up my shoes a lot. <laughs> And finally, my daughter Caroline is here, who I affectionately nicknamed Goose. And I never told you this story. Of course, now it's going to be on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, now it's important to her. It's going to be on YouTube. Um, uh, as you know, Caroline, when you were born, and as the Aaron family is well aware, when Caroline was born, uh, you had a little bit of trouble. Um, and you had to go to the special hospital to get better. And uh, there were definitely some times where your dad and I prayed long nights. And so we were sitting, you remember this, Jeff, we were sitting in the, one of the waiting rooms and they have kind of the Looney Tunes up on the wall. And so from like kind of my generation, you know, there's, I don't know, who were they? They were the, the Tweety Bird and you get the point, right? Roadrunner, all that stuff. And so we were joking, and we were delirious, and we had to, were on no sleep. And um, I said something, and it was ridiculous. It wasn't even the right animal. And I said, what is that, a silly little goose? And, uh, you know, he mocked me. And then, you know, it just kind of stuck. So when I went to see Caroline in the little incubator, I said, how's my little silly little goose? Um, and the reason that I call you that name, and I've never told you this, is because that night I had a a very private, prayerful moment with, with God. And I, I promised that if you were okay, that I would never, ever take you for granted. And so every time that I use that nickname, I remind myself of how blessed and lucky we are as a family to have you. And the only thing I want you to remember from this is that you are always the most important person in my life, no matter what, and you always will be. And with that, thank you very much. Judge Doyle, welcome. 
thank all of you very much for being here and spending this very special occasion with us. And let's go. You're with us.